its own. This is the life of Lucy and Hal, a short play. The middle class are called the bourgeoisie and the world. Well, called the proletariat. I know, I'm joking. I've studied it for a level. I may not be bourgeoisie like you, but that don't mean I can't speak good. <laughs> so, Lucian Howe and Georgie Callahan, two unlikely friends, began to search for the pile of texts. Sorry, what was that? I didn't say anything. Georgie always spoke in such a harsh tone of voice. Perhaps it's due to her upbringing, Lucian pondered. <coughs> well, this is peculiar. What do you find? The Life of Lucian Howe, a short play. Wow, not famous. What? How is this even possible? What is this? Coincidence, probably. Yes, yes, it was a coincidence. Our hero had no idea that he was actually in. Georgie. How many people do you know called Lucian Howe? Only one. But to be fair, I didn't go to private school. <laughs> oh, I get it. <coughs> yes, very well done. Who put you up to this? This isn't down to me. I'm sure it's just one of those things. Why don't you give it a read? I don't understand. What did it say? Only to the class. I'm not going to read anymore. But. This script contains things I've never told anyone before. The first scene. About my mother. It's about the fight she and my father had the day she left. You can't be serious. How did you know that? Luce, I told you, I didn't write it. Maya, you don't have my background. You shouldn't talk. I wasn't thinking that. Please, Georgie, could you stop? Stop what? I worry you. Don't get in to irritate me. This prank has already gone too far, and I could do without the running commentary. <coughs> what is it? A tape. Are you trying to make me think I'm going insane? The narrator thought he should perhaps intervene as the nature of the play had been slightly derailed. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? I mean, I'm certainly not an expert on playwriting, and I don't think it's common practice for an omniscient narrator to uh, intervene in the play. <laughs> Wait, I'm not meant to refer to myself in the first person. I meant to keep a distance to characters. Characters? And the protagonist can hear me too. Well, that is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bet the playwright's going to write me out of the second draft. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sorry this happened to you. What are you looking at? Is this you trying to get me back by pretending you've gone mad? Shh! Are you... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time we want to have heart to heart. Just us men. What have you done to her? Well, don't worry, she's not in any distress. I have all of us in the end. Look, I know this may be difficult for you. This makes it easy for me either. I've just read my whole narrative purpose out the window. I want answers. Who are you? Well, I thought you were smart. Well, that's what it says here in your character description. 
I'm here to dictate your story. I am the narrator. What story? Well, this was meant to be about two mismatched uni friends falling out over their clashing political beliefs. But the, uh, the playwright seems to have taken something of a detour. That's what we covered, by the way. The, the playwright. But I can't be. Fictional? <laughs> yeah, that's Why is this happening? <laughs> Why can I hear you? There yeah, any number of reasons. I suspect there's something wrong with the court. What about Georgia? <laughs> I don't hate it for people like her. I suspect that's why she's been that unaffected. You're the hero in this story. Do you really think that she'd be able to process that? But Georgie is just as clever as me, if not smarter, in a different way. Let her listen, please. <laughs> no can do. I suppose if you must educate her, why don't you try bringing her your character descriptions? Show her the place that she has been allocated in your story. Put her in her place. <laughs> Look, I really should get going on the bit to be in this scene. Don't worry, I'm going to be keeping an eye on you. What happened? What were you talking about? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. I could bloody well try. You look scared to death. Do you seriously think that script holds all your secrets? Because that's just... Where did this come from? I'm not sure. That's when I was mine this morning. That's when I started hearing voices. That's who I was speaking to. This is mad. It feels as if I've had it all along, but I'm only just noticing it. Georgie, please don't panic about this, but I have something to show you. Read this. Character descriptions. Lucian Howe, a smart young man, seemingly predestined to succeed in life, the epitome of middle-class Britain. His dreams of becoming a lawyer are secretly based on the aspirations of his overbearing father. Carry on. Georgie Callahan, a comic relief character, a sarcastic yet kind-hearted working class girl. She's secretly self-conscious of her background after being teased by classmates and struggles due to lack of funds, but makes up for her insecurities with a tough exterior and foul mouth. <laughs> Is that true? I think it's a bit fucking rude to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> your background? You don't ever have I don't. Mind. Do you really think this is legit? That we're actually fictional characters? Then you think that concept was nonsense? I'm an expert in nonsense. I'm an art student. <laughs> not to mention it's pretty hard to ignore the evidence. It's not every day that you black out and wake up holding your best mate's entire life story. The person I spoke to, the one you could have seen, he said he was the narrator. He was able to do things I didn't think possible. He said that this is my story. I gathered that from the title. You're not only really famous, you're eponymous. You're the titular character. Georgie, that's the point. The title, it says a short play. Yeah. What do you think that means? Is this a short play about my life, or is this my life cut short? Let's find out, shall we? What are you doing? I'm skipping to the end, duh. Please don't. Why? What if I learn something that I don't want to know? What if something bad happens to one of us? Were you not listening to your character description? It literally said you're guaranteed to be successful. I know. But it didn't say that about me. Yeah, because you're the hero. I'm just the comic relief character. The funny common girl. Not like I matter anyway. Good news. Looks like you've got a big happy ending coming your way. And you? I didn't get that far, but I'm not going to go looking. What do we do now? Don't know. Do you think there's an audience out there right now? <laughs> Maybe. Can you imagine? It would be like getting spied on by a bunch of peeping toms. <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> what do you always rebel? Have you always got to do what you're told? Can't have a story with that conflict. I don't understand why I'm the main character. Your life has been much more eventful than mine. Eventful? Is that your way of saying I'm poor? I mean, I know everyone no, else but but you're just so much more fun than I am. I agree. You're boring. <laughs> I've never had much control over my life anyway. If this is all that it's going to amount to, a part in a short 
play. It seems kind of poetic that I don't get to have my name in the title. I just don't get why you're considered to be less than me. The narrator wouldn't even let you hear him talk. I guess we'll never know. You're an English student. Mm -hmm. If you had read this play, our play, I bet you would have been able to like analyse it. Maybe even without reading it. Let's be honest, I'd just wing it if there was a revision guide. <laughs> why don't you try? A character analysing our own role. Not a good idea. I'm not really in the mood for an identity crisis. Just listen. The narrator said that this was just meant to be a comedy about our conflicting beliefs. We were meant to face off against one another. Fine. I'll buy. You found our scripts in the pile of the politics plays, right? Well, those plays were all meant to be selected for coursework. There has to be some kind of subtext. Remind me, how were you described in the character descriptions? Seemingly predestined to succeed in life. The epitome of middle class Britain. I personally think it's preposterous. I think it's pretty spot on to be honest, mate. Eh? And what was I described as? Working class, struggling. Wait, does that narrator you keep talking about have a character description? Uh, yes, uh, the narrator, an all knowing, all seeing storyteller who governs the actions of the other characters. It is the main priority to keep them in their roles. I guess you could say this could have been a play about, like, politics society? I don't follow. You're all posh. You're smart. Your path is clear and the people in charge see you as the hero. But it isn't that way for me. I don't live up to the narrator's expectations, so he doesn't think that I'm predestined to succeed like you are. You symbolise the middle class, and I symbolise the rest. I like that idea, as if we might exist beyond these pages. Maybe there are thousands of Lucians and Georges out there at universities, six more colleges. Or perhaps we're overthinking and it really wasn't meant to be more than a light high comedy. It's possible. The study of literature can be bullshit at times. Beautiful and elegant, but bullshit nonetheless. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. <laughs> Don't worry, I think I've got what it takes to get this plot back on track. Lucian, go away. Who should go away? Is the narrator back? Oh wow! Just getting some monkey points. Great. I did love Hello. To see the development. Now, Lucian, I think you should move on. I know you can hear me. Does it get the plot moving along again? I'm not going to obey you. I may be fictional, but I at least want to be in charge of my own story. Besides, I'm not leaving Georgie's side. Don't tell me you've got a sappy on me. You're my best friend. If I leave you, what's to say we'll have a scene together again? The plot may try to divide us. It might attempt to betray us as enemies. I don't want to let that happen. Do you really think you have a choice? Your whole life is contained in that script. Every step written, planned, and directed. Now come with me. Come to fill your narrative purpose. But how do I know it's the proper path to take? Because it says so right there in your stage directions. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean that it's right. What if Georgie is left behind? I'm sure things will work out, but only if you follow your lines. Trust me, it is better What's to see saying? this out to the end. He says, I need to go with him. I need to carry on with the plot. <coughs> I know you don't quite agree with my politics, but there's a student government position I want to try out for. And I think it's a step that I have to take. I hope that it won't get between us. I suppose it will if it's written here. <laughs> Georgie, I'll see you soon. But this play has a happy ending, right? I mean, I'm definitely going to see you again. We'll end up as friends and everything will be tied up nicely. Oh, that little detour from the storyline took so much time, I don't think there's enough time for me to show you what happens. I suppose the play is still salvageable. I'll just tell you all the ending anyway. Why do we have a couple of Little did Lucian know that he would go on to absolutely What's dazzle everyone in the student government debates. Please! Despite his so-called friend, George's attempt at sabotaging so his campaign. Say. Luckily, he would never see her Don't again. Don't tell me this is the end. Lucian called the eye of a London law firm who offered him an internship at on the spot. At least there'll be some kind of future. And An optimistic He ending. lived happily ever after, <laughs> as boys like Lucian often do.
Bien.